Hello, how is it going? It is Fake Hero coming at you once again with another Runeterra deck spotlight video. Today we're going to be discussing Karma Spiders. This is a list that I kind of built up myself. I did take ideas from other Karma Spider deck lists. However, this one, it just has a couple cards different, not too much of a change. This deck at the moment I'm finding a lot of success with. I've managed to reach up to Platinum 2 holding about a 70% uh, win rate. That was from a climb from about uh, lower end of plat four up to plat two higher end. So pretty happy with the list so far. Before we jump over, I just want to recommend that um, if you do have Karma and you're looking for a Karma list, I do recommend this one. It has the ability to beat up on aggro decks quite easily, aggro slash burn, and you have some good tools against mid range. You will struggle against other heavy control matchups, maybe like Ez Karma or Karma Dinger, as I like to call it. But other than that, you're going to find some good success. And even in those matchups, you have the ability to play aggressive and uh, beat up on those control variants. So before we go through the cards here, I just want to say I am streaming over on Twitch a daily at the moment. So if you could please come over and say hello, that would be greatly appreciated. Links will be in the description. We'll go through the cards one by uh, one and I'll discuss the reasons for why they are here and the reasons why I may not be including some other cards if it comes up. Hapless Aristocrat is a really good tool against aggro. Fear sims aren't around at the moment, so this finds tremendous value. Also, given the Spiderling gives you a lot of synergies with the Elise. Elise is just a great tempo tool, very valuable card. And at the moment, it's pretty powerful until maybe it gets nerfed in the future. I would uh, say this is a good, good enough card to sometimes build your deck around or even tweak other uh, decks such as Karma, how we ended up in this situation. Glimpse Beyond, uh, high, high valuable, draw two cards this is insane. They're going to remove your stuff, you're going to play Glimpse and you're going to find good value from that. Also good against your opponent's Vile Feasts. You can really play around that sometimes to deny them the minion. Uh, Key Guardian's a little bit of my own flavor. Uh, this card's probably not necessary. This card can be changed depending on what your meta looks like and what you might be facing. If you're, if you're versing a lot of aggressive decks, I believe this card's really strong. If you're versing a lot of control decks, you probably want to take this out for something a bit more higher value. Uh, Vile Feast, no doubt about it. Really powerful card, very flexible, and just provides a lot of great tools against elusive decks. Frenzy Skidder all around, really powerful. At first, I wasn't running this card at all. I was actually running the 2-2 uh, the that gains a life steal. And towards the end of the game, when you're enlightened, it becomes a 6-6. Six, six. Switched over to Frenzy Skidder. Uh, focused purely more on the aggressive side of things in this deck now and flowing into Karma if need be. So Frenzy Skidder is just really powerful. It's flexible as well, and it's a spider. Shadow Assassin, I think I've said this multiple times in my videos, but this card, understated. 3 mana 2-2, two, two, but powerful effect, drawing cards in Runeterra, there's limited effects. So a card like this kind of finds a lot of value and it's elusive, so you cannot complain. Deny, two copies at the moment, this may vary from 1 to 3, but at the moment 2 copies seems to be the sweet spot. And if we continue to see a lot of War Mother Controls decks, or cards that want to run high value vengeances, then uh, this may go up to 3, and that could include removing cards like Key Guardian in those matchups. Spirit's Refuge is another flavor card. Uh, this helps out in the aggressive decks quite a lot and it can be quite a good trick to play with your karma and it could also get you the life still that you may need. Will of Ionia, three copies, really powerful, seeing lots of control, warm other decks at the moment. So I'm finding this card could be quite powerful and flexible in so many ways. Just be having the ability to recall their unit in certain situations can allow you to buy A more time or B buy more tempo. So that's really great. Broad Awakening, two copies. This could be three copies, depending on what you're seeing. I think if you're seeing a lot more aggressive decks, I think Broad Awakening finds a bit more use and utility there. But at the moment, I'm running two copies. We'll see how that goes, but I think just uh, it's a very productive tool against control decks, and it gives you some tempo, and uh, you want to be productive in those matchups, so this card finds a lot of value there. Uh, Grasp of the Undying, two copies. This may vary. This. Some of these cards that have that have like the two copies are probably the ones that you will trick around with. But Grasp, I'm finding two at the moment to be okay. That's because we're running cards like Spirit's Refuge and Key Guardian, which kind of gives me that kind of Grasp value. Although we haven't got as many minions in the deck, you may consider taking out a Key Guardian for an extra Grasp. It can, uh, kind of helps against the mid-range decks quite a lot. Karma, obviously three copies of. So the idea with this deck is that you'll pretty much play more aggressively than your typical control list. But you will uh, kind of flow into Karma and it can just buy you more value against some mid-range decks and uh, against control uh, aggressive decks to throw it for them that they want to deal with. Otherwise, it just keeps getting you value. 
So you pretty much play a Karma for tempo against control, uh, aggressive decks. And against mid-range decks, you can find some value with like uh, Spirit's Refuge or even landing your Key Guardian onto it earlier in the game. Karma, very much big play around card. Uh, Withering Whale, just pretty much real powerful against aggressive decks. This is a um, blowout against many of those lists. Won't talk about it too much. Plus having a leveled up Karma, really strong. Rekindler, this is to kind of bring back your Karmas. We only have two copies. Uh, typical super control decks will probably run three copies of Rekindler, but for this more slightly tempo variated control list, uh, two copies is fine. And the idea of Rekindler, I find that hopefully you curve into it against the matchups that you need to. And usually against the super control decks, the Rekindlers may not be enough anyway. So just two copies I find to be really powerful at the moment. So yeah, um, a bit of a flavor text here, Vengeance. I'm finding Vengeance at the moment to be quite powerful. I'm seeing a lot of Trinomiers, I'm seeing a lot of Fajord stuff going on, and a lot of people playing um, Commander Lidros in their Corona decks. <laughs> Corona, oh my god. Arena decks. So at the moment, we're running Vengeance. I think it finds value in the times that you need to, and if you are versing aggressive decks, you may just play it and it works out okay anyway. I just need, I need cards to deal with the mid-range decks comfortably, and Vengeance this is a one-of, can be sometimes a game changer. Uh, Real Nation, this is two copies. Um, depending on what your cards you have, you may just have one Real Nation. Chuck another Vengeance in. This is an epic card, so it's a bit more expensive, but uh, Real Nation, two copies. Three can sometimes be too heavy. And at the same time, you want to make sure you find your Real Nation when you need it. So I think two right now is the sweet spot. This may or may not change in the future. Let's jump over and play some games, okay? So what we want to avoid is super controlly decks. So I think the Karina Leedros, depending on if they find their Leedros or not, uh, it's really a bit hard. Uh, but against this, these uh, mid-rangey Frostbite decks can be kind of tricky too. Especially if they find their Nivea. Uh, Ruination will find a lot of value in this matchup. Like any matchup that cannot get access to deny, sorry, any matchup that can't get den access to den deny makes Ronation so ridiculous. This hand looks okay. I think we throw back the Will of Ionia. We may keep the Ruination because we're going to need it. We only have two copies in the deck. So this is a very specific matchup, right? Now I'm not sure with this, his list, how aggressive it is. You'll probably want to keep a aggressive hand against mine or a very minion focused board. Let's just try out the Elise. I kind of hope to find something cheaper there and we found the extra copy of Ruination. This is a bit of a bummer. I really hope to find like maybe Hapless or Aristocrat in this slot. Having two Ruinations, okay fair enough, but this is a very heavy hand now. But at least we have um, Elise coming back into our turn so we can get the free swing. He didn't play anything there, so maybe he's waiting for me to see what I would do to react. This makes sense. That's fine. I think that's okay. I would have liked to have um, swung in, but we've got rid of five points of damage on the field, so... I will tap out the Frenzy Skidera, and we'll keep trying to, like, push the board down, and maybe we can uh, curve out into Karma, and we'll just let it sit there for a period of time. I'll be fine if he uses this to trade. This is a fine trade for me. Uh, yeah, he'll take the damage. It makes a lot more sense. He'll probably have some tricks to play next turn to clear my board. I will unite the frail so I'm pretty sure when Ash attacks, she will frostbite the strongest enemy. That is a little bit of a bummer. We're probably not going to play... Um, we're probably not going to play Karma next turn. At the same time, we consider we have double ruination. We have Rekindler. So maybe we play, we tempo out the Karma and this buys us enough time to hopefully get two Ruination. Pretty sure I take five here. We could also float the mana to Vengeance, Ash. I'm gonna take five to the face. I think we're going to play Karma. We're going to hope that it sticks and we're going to pass our turn. Actually, this swing might be a consider. So we'll pass. He's going to do some tricks with Frostbite. 
just a moment. And I'm going to pass. This is very scary. This card's actually nuts, and without a withering whale, I'm in a tough position. We will have enough mana to play Ruination next turn, but it might be too late. Pretty sure we're forced to Vengeance here. So let's go ahead and do that. We just most likely hit the uh, Ash. It makes the most logical sense. He may have some combat tricks here. He is Noxus. So this deck's a bit pretty. Actually, it's decent to us. I've noticed that a trend that I've been struggling against some of the Anivia boss bitey decks. That's exactly what his deck is. I need to float one mana. Probably doesn't buy me doesn't buy me enough mana to actually come back into my turn. So I probably play the aristocrat here, just to have something on the board and use that mana for now because we are not going to have enough time to get the ruination. Could have considered uh, definitely passing in that moment to try and save up my mana for ruination coming back into this turn. So if I play Rekindler, I may die to a lot of things. Could go for a Key Guardian, try and look for more answers. I don't think anything really deals with the board as well as probably playing Rekindler for spreading the board wide. If I'm lucky, I may find a combat trick from Karma ending the turn. I'm just more scared that he's going to play down some more minions and it's going to make it a lot harder for me. So I can swing with this, but there's honestly no point. Uh, he'd have to make a mistake himself by blocking with some of the one ones. So most likely we are unfortunately dead here. So this is a pretty, uh, this is a combat trick that might make the difference. And this is another combat trick that'll make the difference. So we want to stun the 5-5. Five five. I'm scared because he's Noxus that I can't afford to take too much face damage. So this makes a bit more sense than blocking there. I don't necessarily want to send back cards to his hand. Let's just do this and hopefully we survive. I don't think I can afford to this Will of Iron here. I can do some combat tricks now. I could throw back the wolf. Let my karma survive. But then I'm just going to roll a nation 100% next turn anyway. So... In that case... Let's draw some cards. I'm not sure if they changed the uh, how this mechanic works. Because lately I swear I've been glimpsing and cards have been smacking my face. No, it's still not a thing. I, I'm not sure how... That is such a weird mechanic that really needs to be explained further. I need to float as much mana as I can in case I find some minions to play after I ruin nation. So I'm There's no way he plays something. If I if I develop a minion, I'd be shocked if he played anything. I'm just gonna swing first. He could he could outplay himself for sure. He shouldn't play anything here. Yeah. So we'll play the ruin nation. Hopefully he hasn't got any minions in hand develop onto the board afterwards. We just still have the copy of Will, which we managed to save from the previous turn, so it's going to come in handy against this card. Okay, the elusive we'll go for, we need the card draw to find more answers. I 
I didn't like the idea of um, sending that back to his hand. Like that's just asking for trouble as the game, game progresses. So I think for now, we're just gonna take a block. And we'll see what his next move is. I'm glad he's not running Trindamir. Yeah, let's just go for some cycle. I could have maybe uh, definitely played the Karma first. I want to play down the Karma with Barrier. It's probably a bad time to play it. But he swung first. This is just hopefully to guarantee that he has no cards that can deal damage to it. I don't think Noxus or Fragility even have a card that can deal with it, so that may have been a misplay. I want to put down the Aristocrat just for a target for Glimpse if it comes down to it. Yeah, I probably should have just waited to play that. That's fine. Let's just draw first. We have one more copy of Rekindler. Okay, I might. <laughs> I'm going to draw again. I'm going to send these to his face and then we're going to figure out what happens next. This is kind of random. Uh, it's really good to get that out of his hand now. Fine. We're going to play chill now. Uh, I think we are in an okay, okay position. The only thing that's going to throw us off guard is if he's running cards that I wouldn't traditionally expect. I'm going to slowly windle this card down. It may be just better to trade with the Aristocrat, but we'll do it this way. Just in case Karma gets dealt with and we find Grasp. Yeah, this is probably a fun opportunity to glimpse now. Pretty sure we're going to burn a card, so... <laughs> we'll see what happens here. We're going to burn cards. Or maybe the glimpse only goes off once and we don't get four draws. I think that's how it works, actually. One... Two. Yeah. So we only get two draws anyway, so that's fine. This most likely gets uh, dealt with. I don't mind using one of these now. We'll get some uh, resources out of him. I think his deck's more tempo oriented, so I doubt he's running Avalanche, but we'll see. Okay, that's a really random surrender. I have to argue, I don't know if like tilted that he couldn't win already. That's really random. Very anticlimactic. Aggressive. Uh, Withering Whale's insane. Spirit's Refuge is actually a pretty interesting keep. I'm gonna hear for a reason. But I think if I can just find the one drops first and curve into it, it's a lot better. We're actually gonna throw back the Karma. I wanna curve into those cards. This is a perfect matchup for Aristocrat to be in our opening hand. Unfortunately, it's not here. We have Elise. This buys a lot of time. Double Elise, that's good too. I don't bite. <laughs> this goes in. He kills it. Uh, this will, unfortunately, unless he takes the Elise to the face, which he won't do. Calling sensation would have been great there. At least it's also just fun. In hot. At least allows us to float some mana. I, know. I have a decision to make if I take damage to the face. Everything's in place. I don't think I could take that much damage to the face, even though we have a really good Withering Whale afterwards. If I block this, I save a lot of face damage. If I block this, this makes a lot of sense. Actually, let's we'll just, we'll just block not greedily. And we'll have Withering Whales when we need them. If he deals with my board, yeah, that's fine. Damn it. In a position that we're in, we can be slightly resourceful. If things are a bit more dire, we would have to argue if it's worth. I'm gonna open attack here. Out from the 
Good play, uh, Shadow Assassin, allowing him to develop. But this makes it harder for him to deal with my Elise now. So I'll take the open attacks when I can. We don't need to play that fast. Let me show you what I can do. Uh, perfect target for Grasp. I don't want that to do any combat tricks against me. The card's a bit threatening. We also argue... Not, but I, I believe that if I grasp this, I'm going to be in a good tempo spot. I could have waited for like till the end of the turn to play it. The interactions with some of the spells sometimes are just a bit off-putting. Like realistically, I'm just supposed to pass there, wait for him to do some combat tricks, stuff like that, but you know, it's okay. It's all about the mind games realistically. Him using any spells to hit my minions is worthwhile. The only problem is if he curves into Darius, that's going to be a bit of a disappointment. <laughs> or if you play something like that. Let's draw some cards. Okay, so considering... I'm so scared to play Glimpse because I swear if I do this... His attack goes through. But... Most of the time it's not meant to. But lately, I feel like it has been. I need to test this out. Block. Okay. That should work the way I think it does. Uh, we play on the Aristocrats. I thought about conserving mana to, for possible ruinations going forward. But I, I think I should have enough time to... He may have one turn of Darius on the field. I just need a coming back into his next turn. I need to save some mana. I need to save one mana in a spell dome. I think that's fine. The Jinx is going to level up very shortly. Actually, we don't swing with the Aristocrat in case the Jinx levels up. He'll be able to um, deal with it. So we don't want to do that. I'm gonna actually gonna pass him mana. I'm just gonna hold three if I can. Not any appropriate reason. Just gives me more flexible moves going forward. We block. We'll temper out the Rekindler. Getting the Elise back is fine. This is not a matchup where we need to be resourceful. When there's opportunities arise, we can be resourceful, of course. But for now, it's okay. I'm probably going to deny this. I can't afford to deny it. That's okay. I kind of played myself into that trap. Maybe should have waited to see what he could have done with it. But we're actually going to start pressuring him down now. Now it's a party. One of my, my options here, my options, hey, I wonder, I wonder if I just play Rekindler. I start going face. Well, I have enough mana to play a deny. I don't mind it. If the opportunity comes up where we can play aggressive, we play aggressive. At this point, it doesn't really matter what he does here. Now... I'm considering if I want to save my mana for denying Get Excited or the Rocket. I'm actually going to choose to deny the Rocket if he plays it. Don't need to swing with the Spider. Actually, no, we do. We should. But he's going to play the Rocket regardless, so that's free damage. 
I'm shocked he took that to the face. I'm super shocked he did that. Like, why not just take a trade with the uh, block with the Jinx? I don't understand. Uh, denying that there is really good. Also, at the same time, I talked about uh, denying the rocket to save the spider and attacking face, but um, this gave me more options. Save some damage to my face, put a 3 3 on the field. Uh, Board Awakening is a bad play here because most likely he's going to play his hand out and have the ability to play the rocket. Won't find better this side of the sun. I think we just have lethal if we do nothing. So he'll play the rocket, I'll deny it to save the spider, then we should have enough units to go face. This game's over. Ah, uh, just for safety I'll play another aristocrat. Did it move? Come on, fish bones. I don't want to. Please, I have connections. <laughs> Should have waited to play the um this guy. I would have open attacked, so it wouldn't have really mattered too much. It should be a win. Anyway, that should wrap up the YouTube video, hey. Probably cut off the filming there. Gaming. <laughs> that was a good game. The first game was a bit surprising though. Uh, Some don't come out of nowhere, so I was a bit confused about that. Second game went just as expected. Complete blowout against the aggressive decks.